This question is a question featuring the cumulative frequency curve, popularly called OGIV, and in the question, we are told that the table shows the distribution of marks obtained by students in an examination. So we have those marks and the associated frequencies with each set of the marks, and then we are told to construct first a cumulative frequency table for the distribution, and then we are to draw the cumulative frequency curve for the distribution, and then using the curve we are to find correct to one decimal place, the median mark, and the lowest mark for distinction, if only 5% of the student passed with distinction. So, this is the question, and we are going to go ahead to attempt them correctly. In this particular year, student, you just need to take notes. You cannot run away from questions on graph. This is the second question on graph, and so, let's put our minds together. If you can get your pen, your barrel, your graph sheet, Let's work this together so that once you know how to do this, you'll be able to replicate it in your exams and that excellence you are going to gain. So, we are going to come up with a table right about now. So, this is going to be the solution to the question on the cumulative frequency curve. Okay, so first we are asked to find the cumulative frequency table and that's what we are going to be coming up with here. And the feature of the table is that we have our marks as we are giving we have the frequency which we are also giving, but we are going to compute the upper class boundary, the UCB, and the cumulative frequency. And this is the way to go about it. Now, to get the upper class boundary, we need to look at the higher mark in the first set, okay, and the lower mark in the second set, and find the average of the two. Here we have 9 and 10, meaning that we will just say the upper class boundary for the first case will be 9 plus 10 divided by 2. 9 plus 10 is 19, so we have 19 over 2, and 19 over 2 is 9.5. So, that's how we are going to compute the upper class boundary for each of the class. The upper class boundary in this particular case is going to be 9.5. So, we just put that in as 9.5, and the same incremental value will just happen to this higher max for each max set. So, we have, in this case, we have 19.5, and then 29.5 and 39.5 and on and on like that all right so let me just fill this up so this is the set of values for the upper class boundary you don't need the lower class boundary okay you just need the upper class boundary to compute the table for the cumulative frequency table and you subsequently in the cumulative frequency graph okay now, how do we get the cumulative frequency? For the first set of marks, the cumulative frequency will also be the frequency. So here we have 7. But for subsequent ones, we are going to add the initial cumulative frequency to the next frequency. So here, the cumulative frequency initially is 7. Then, plus this frequency, 7 plus 11, that will be 18. Okay? Then here, it will be 18 plus 17. So that's why you call it cumulative. You continue to add each subsequent frequency to the initial cumulative that we have gotten before. So 18 plus 17, that should be 35. Okay. Then we have 35 plus 20, that will be 55. 55 plus 29, 9 and 5, that is 14. 2 and 5 is 7 plus 1, this is 84. Okay. 84 plus 34, 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 plus 3, that is 11, okay? 118 plus 30, that would be 148. 148 plus 25, 8 plus 5, that is 13, okay? 4 plus 2 is 6, plus that 1, that would be 7, and I have 1 here. 173 plus 21 will be 194, and 194 plus 6 will be 200. So, now that we've got the final cumulative frequency to be 200, you need to check so that you don't make mistakes. So, to check, what you do is you add, by the use of the calculator, okay, you add each of these entries of frequencies together and you have to ensure that the sum you get here and this final cumulative frequency you get, they are going to be the same. So, if you want to do that, you can just say here we have 7 plus 11 plus 17 plus 20, plus 29, plus 34, plus 30, plus 25, 
plus 21 and plus 6 was the sum of that good that is 200 so we're on the right track we've been able to compute all the cumulative frequencies as needed for this particular cumulative frequency table and then in the second question we are told to plot the cumulative frequency curve that is the OG. so we're going to go ahead to look at how to do that now so we have our graph sheet here now in plotting the cumulative frequency curve what we do is that we have the cumulative frequency on the vertical axis and the upper class boundary on the horizontal axis that's the ideal way to go about plotting the particular graph and if you look at this here we have our least value to be 7 and then the highest value to be 200 so we need to scale this vertical axis in such a way that 7 up to 200 are appropriately catered for and if you look at the number of buses that i have in this particular graph you also need to confirm with your graph sheet that is supplied to you in the exam i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 okay so i have two divisions let's say i want to leave the margin at the lower space and at the upper space so i can say i have 10 divisions i have 200 as the highest mark so how do i divide 200 in 10 position i can just say 200 over 10 and that will be 20. so each of this big box which is generally taken as two centimeters for me should represent 20 units on the cumulative frequency scale okay so if i have that look at the upper class boundary this is on cumulative frequency on the upper class boundary as is i have 9.5 down to 99.5 and there are incremental values of 10 9.5 19.5 29.5 then i don't need to really start from the origin okay that's that don't that actually i will just say that for that particular horizontal as is then my scale should be two centimeter to represent 10 marks on the upper class boundary as is. so this is going to be the scale that i'll be using for this particular question so i can say i have my scale as two centimeter representing 20 units on the cumulative frequency as this and two centimeters representing 10 marks on the upper class boundary as this now we want to divide our graph in such a way to cater for all of this we only have positive values positive values to the horizontal and positive values to the vertical in both cases so what we need to just do is that we need to make them meet i think this would be a good position so i can draw my horizontal graph just like this That's the horizontal axis, and then can also cater for the vertical axis, just like that. All right, so that is as good as it gets. And then, because the upper class boundary is not on a scale of ten, okay. Normally, what I advise students to do is you can notch, you can notch that origin, showing that you are not really, really scaling from the origin. Then you can use these thick lines okay the two two centimeters to represent your 10 okay you know the, the the space from each two centimeter mark is 10 marks but because i've notched it i'm not starting from zero so i want to say i'm starting this from 9.5 okay so this will be 19.5 this will be 29.5 this will be 39.5 then 49.5, 59.5, then 69.5, 79.5, 89.5, 89 and 99.5. And you can see it scale appropriately. So I don't need to be saying that uh, it's 9.5 that is in between these last two. No, because I'm not starting from the origin, I notched it and then I can mark it off in incremental values of 10 but starting from 9.5 now on the vertical axis i've said that i have um 200 and i'm using some divisions of 20 okay so here in this first case this will be 20 and this will be 40 this will be 60 80 100 120 
incremental values of 20 okay 140 160 180 and here is 200 okay so that's how that's going to be we are now having all our values i want to represent correctly denoted in this particular graph sheet and we can say we want to go ahead to start extrapolating those values against one another so here yeah, i've appropriately labeled my scale of the graph i have my axis the horizontal axis and the vertical axis i have my cumulative frequency table i just need to extrapolate those values as appropriate and this is what i would love to do now on the cumulative frequency axis already i'm saying two centimeter each of these tick box is representing 20 units so here on my graph i have five divisions so i can say five is corresponding to 20 units okay so how much value is just a boss going to take i can call that m to find that to find the value of that singular small box i will just cross multiply to say 5m is equal to 20 so that i divide both sides by 5 my m is going to be 20 over 5 that is 4 okay so each of these small boxes that i'm having is going to take for you this is the classical way that you can use to find how to extrapolate your values on the graph without any stress like here i have five divisions no problem in your graph paper on your graph sheet you may have 10 divisions so you can say 10 is equal to 20 units so how much unit is one going to take of course that's going to be two or just like in this second case now you can see on the upper class boundary as is i'm just showing this so that you can understand perfectly how to construct your graph and go ahead without having any headache already we are saying that um two centimeters which is actually the division here is corresponding to 10 marks so on my graph what i have is five subdivisions so those five subdivisions is equivalent to 10 marks okay and then what's one mark going to be if i call that n again i cross multiply i will just just like i did the n will be 10 over 5 and that is two marks but i don't even need that because on this particular axis all of the extrapolations i want to do will land directly on the tick boxes that is why i was recommending that you need to notch so that your 9.5 don't fall here they just fall directly on the tick line so we are good to go we have our subdivisions we know what to do we can go ahead to extrapolate those values so let me just clear my board here and then good enough we can look at the first case when the upper class boundary is 9.5 we know this is 9.5 so we are tracing from 9.5 here and we are trying to get the corresponding values on the vertical axis okay the cumulative frequency axis here we have seven but we already know that this is four this is eight twelve sixteen and twenty so that is consistent so seven will be just before eight just before it if i want to just do that i will say it's just somewhere around here and if that's the case you can just you can just try and join them together just like this and you can see that point of intersection is a point of interest for us so i don't want to make my graph clumsy i just want students to see what i'm doing so i'm noting that here is my point of interest in the second case we have 19.5 and 18 this is 20 just before it is 16 so in between the two is 18 so i will just have my 18 here i think this will be more beautiful for you if you are having um subdivisions of 10 units on the graph you just be able to locate your values appropriately but no problem we can go ahead with what we have here too when the upper class boundary is 29.5 we have the cumulative frequency to be 35 okay so yeah this is 20 24 28 32 36 and 40 so 35 will be somewhere here just extrapolating with 29.5 then for 39.5 we have 55 55 look at what i want to do now 
this is 40 okay yeah here, here is 40 on this line this is 40 here is 60 50 will be in between them like this then 55 will be in between 60 and 50 so it should be somewhere like here and that's what i will trace here to extrapolate to it 39.5 it will be somewhere here and you can see how i'm even managing my graph despite the fact that i have quite small divisions to use it's just for you to build your proficiency in knowing what to go about how to go about solving this also so 49.5 and 84 so here yeah, we have 80 and the next one is just 84 because we are using 4 as our sub graph division so that's quite clear then we have 59.5 and 118 now it's getting interesting 118 if you take 4 out of 120 that would be 116 yeah so 118 will be just in between those two all right okay then 69.5 69.5 and 148 this 140 144 148 i hope you are getting this quite easily okay the more you practice with this i can assure you the better you are going to become you can check some of the videos we've done before it's not as vast and quick as this but practice is not getting us better on working questions like this so when the upper class boundary is 79.5 okay the cumulative frequency is 173 so here we have 79.5 on this line so we have 160 164 168 172 and we're looking at 173 so it's just very close here all right and then when we have 89.5 on the upper class boundary we have 194 on the cumulative frequency 194 this is 180 184 188 192 196 so just here is 194 and then 299.5 this is the simplest that you can do and so we have our points that we can now try and join together to form our cumulative frequency curve so that's what i'm going to do now students you can make use of your french curve for the cumulative frequency curve the french curve is quite versatile for you it's just a matter of you trying to locate all the points together and joining them as appropriate but i'm going to employ freehand there because i'm using my digital tool and i can't bring in a french curve so let's see how that goes So here is my cumulative frequency curve, popularly called the Hogif. On your graph sheet, just appropriately label it as the cumulative frequency curve, okay? So that is as good as done. So the other thing that we are asked to find in question C is that in the first case, we are asked to find the median mark. How do you find the median mark given this cumulative frequency curve? This is what we do. Look at the cumulative frequency that we got finally. It's 200, okay? So we have the median mark will be at the 200 over 2 position. Okay? And that will be the 100th term, okay? So we are looking for the 100th term. 200 over 2 is 100. So here we can see this is our 100. And I can just come over to my graph. On the cumulative frequency graph this is 100 yeah this is 100 and then i want to trace from 100 to the curve oh beautiful okay then from there i want to trace down to see what my mark is going to be and here it is just particularly at this location you can see so the question is what mark is corresponding to that on the upper class boundary as is you can see from the graph that is going to give it is exactly in the midpoint of 49.5 and 59.5 okay so 
or if I want to just take my normal division that I extrapolated before, I will say there are subdivisions of 2 2 marks. So I have 49.5 here plus 2, that will be 51.5 plus another 2, that will be 53.5. If I want to add another 2, that will now be 55.5. So I have 53.5, I have 55.5. What is the middle of that? And that will be 54. 0.5 max okay normally there'll be a margin for error in the exam so they may add plus or minus one mark but for for this particular question we can see that we are quite on point it is 54.5 max so this is corresponding to the first question in number c okay now we need to look at the second question in c in which we are told that if five percent of the students add distinction so 5% are distinctions. Then we are to look at the least mark for distinction. Now, this is what we need to do. If 5% are distinction, that means that 95%, that's 95 over 100, of 200 is going to be the least mark for distinction. And like this, you can just cut 100 year 1, 100 year 2. So 95 times 2, that is the 198th term. So it is the 198th term that will correspond to the least mark for a student to get to end distinction in the result for the marks that we are collating. So we need to look at the 198th term. And if you look at this curve now, this give curve, this 180, this 200, in between them will be exactly 190 because it's the median of the two. So we have 190 here. But we are looking for the scenario in which we trace this 198 term to the curve and then find the mark on the upper class boundary as it so we can just trace like this from 190, just take it to the curve, ensure that is a straight line. I don't want to miss that. Okay, and then for whatever it is that we are looking at, we can just just ensuring we have our straight line so that you can make use of your ruler to find this correctly and you can see this is quite good so we are looking at this position that is the value of the mark that we are concerned about now look at this initially we have identified that each of the small divisions of my box is taking two marks so yeah this is just the box immediately before the 89.5 mark so just taking two marks out of that will amount to 87.5. So this is going to give me this one was 54.5 marks. This is going to give me 87.5 as a mark for distinction. Okay, we can just take a margin of error of plus or minus one, but 87.5 will be the least mark for distinction in this particular set of data that we are given for the mass scored by students in the test and like that we have come to the end of this beautiful question on cumulative frequency curve in which first we evaluated the cumulative frequency table we found the upper class boundary we evaluated the cumulative frequency and we used those data to plot the graph of the cumulative frequency curve that is the give just as it was shown here and then we are able to use the curve to find the median mark which amount to half of the total cumulative frequency that's half of 200 which is the 100 term and we find the corresponding mark for the 100 term to be 54.5 marks and then we are able to find the least mark for distinction if 5% of them are distinction the 5% will amount to 190 to 200 this region here this region at the top of the curve that's the distinction so the least mark we just trace it to the upper class boundary as is to get the least mark for decision as it's 7.5 marks. So this is just the process that you need to follow as student to be able to work with cumulative frequency curve, the OGIF curve, the cumulative frequency table. And the admonition we always give is that the more you practice with this, the better you are going to become. Okay. So just take your pencil, take your graph sheet, take your workbook, go through your past questions, look at all the years in which you are seeing questions that are featuring the cumulative frequency table or the cumulative frequency curve and make sure you attempt them and you will see that to be better prepared for your exam to gain 